Barbary Dactylus. Design. Our last pterosaur continues the trend of this Moroccan dig site with very little substantive skeletal remains. Barbary Dactylus is another nyctosaurid pterosaur, but much larger than any of the remains known of Alcyone. The most complete specimen, also the holotype, is a femur, a radius, ulna, humerus, the shoulder blade, and a chunk of the lower jaw. All other specimens are humeri. Kinda sucks, man. For those that may complain about showing off this ecosystem of partial pterosaurs, I must note the creators are trying to show the unique nature of the ecosystem as well as the diversity in pterosaur body forms more than they are trying to recreate these specific genera of pterosaurs perfectly. It also just so happens that these reconstructions are spot on in comparison to pterosaurs known from more complete remains. So criticism, though somewhat warranted, is largely moot in this particular case. Barbary Dactylus is shown here with the typical nyctosaurid body plan, complete with a tuning fork style antler crest jutting out the back of the skull, similar to Nyctosaurus itself. Since the full skull of Barbary Dactylus is unknown, they went with a different shape of the crest to Nyctosaurus but kept the overall antler idea to better provide a compare and contrast to the other pterosaurs in the segment. The uncovered segment for the Deserts episode, which has a sequence dedicated to Barbary Dactylus, shows a completely fabricated skull of Barbary Dactylus in the museum library set with David. Though this skull is based on other close relatives and probably isn't that far off from the real Barbary Dactylus skull, I do think it should have been pointed out that it is hypothetical. I think it would have been a good opportunity to compare it with the known skull of Nyctosaurus to explain why they went with a Nyctosaurus style head crest and why they did not do a segment with Nyctosaurus itself. The reason being that Nyctosaurus lived 87 to 82 million years ago along the Western Interior Seaway, thus making it out of reach of the time frame for the series. You can't really tell their color scheme or the level of feathering due to the lighting of the scene. When they appear again in the Deserts episode, I'll touch on that. Behavior the idea that big showy pterosaur males work to maintain territories and attract females is well supported, and Prehistoric Planet shows male-to-male -male combat and male display as part of the main story. Lots of opportunity for posturing, vocalizing male display, but tens of species today that behave this way have also evolved sneaky males that anatomically mimic females and gain female access in other ways. This must have happened in the past, and the Prehistoric Planet team wanted to bring attention to this possibility. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.